Hey, it's Lucy. When you're a PhD student, you are bombarded with opportunity like no other time I've ever experienced. Several times a day to my student account, the emails come through. Sign up to our beginner's coding course. Demonstrators wanted for a first year field trip. Come right for our student blog. And if you go about actively searching, there's more still. Conferences and internships. And you make even more when you realise that you can actually create them yourself. If I want to improve my public speaking skills, I can speak at virtual science fairs. I love writing. I can submit articles to the university's paper. I'm interested in student welfare. I can start a mental health listening group. All good opportunities and ways to improve yourself. But PhDs are hard enough and I've already got enough on my plate. So why should I do it? Here's why you do it. Here's why you say yes to opportunity. And if you're listening and thinking like, of course you say yes to opportunity, just hear me out. There's two reasons, and the first is investment in yourself. It's all practice. There will be times when you have to give a high-stakes presentation, or when you have to explain your work eloquently and elegantly for a journal, or times when you have to do both for a grant or job application. It would be reassuring, then, that time you have to give a really important presentation to 100 conference delegates if you've already spoken to half a dozen half-smaller audiences at previous events. And it would be encouraging if when you finally have to put pen to paper and get down your research, if you've already written a couple of sections in papers before, even if it was just for the postdoc in your lab. Hard skills too are an investment. You spend an hour every morning teaching yourself to code, that is time you've lost to invest in other affairs, but it's a bloody good skill to have and you don't know how useful that will be. Investment is just the right word because it's time you're investing, and energy, and maybe funds, but you've got to weigh up where you're placing that investment. Think of your time, your headspace, your funds as limited resources that must be carefully placed. Weigh up these sunken resources against the potential gains. If I say yes to this, will I get more out of it than I'm putting in? The problem is you can't really anticipate which will be the most important opportunities, and so somehow you've got to be selective. At the end of the day, you are here at your university in that department to get a PhD, to produce independent, valuable research to your field, and nothing can get in the way of that. Knowing which projects to seize and which to let pass you by is a skill you'll develop like any other. And finding that balance between staying focused, but also with pushing yourself out of a place you're comfortable, saying no as well as yes to opportunity, it comes with practice. Because this is what you do next. Once you've learned how to say yes to opportunity, you then have to learn how to say no. What it took me a really long time to figure out was that every time you say yes to something, you're inescapably saying no to something else, some other use of your time. And you can't have it all. You have to choose your opportunities. You have to learn to say no to opportunity. That's when you've got good enough to know that you've got enough on. When taking on that extra one thing, however small, would be detrimental to everything else you're doing because you just don't have the time or the headspace. Now is the time instead to buckle down on what you've already taken on and do it bloody well. I mentioned there's two reasons to take on opportunity, and if the first one can be thought of as increasing order in your life, expanding on what you're already doing, getting better at what you're already doing, the PhD, building on the academic skill set, this second one can be thought of as dipping your toe a little bit into chaos. Your PhD is important to you. It's probably the main focus of your life, and it probably should be. It's a big deal. It's a big undertaking. But it's not everything. Here's a little bit of chaos for you. How about saying yes to opportunity in a place where it doesn't matter what happens there? It doesn't matter if you excel, doesn't matter if you succeed, doesn't matter if you even improve. It's somewhere just for you. This isn't coding. This is painting by numbers and hanging it on your wall. It's not speaking at local science fairs, it's amateur dramatics. And it's not writing science articles to put on your CV. It's writing book chapters. Make sure you keep room for that little bit of uncertainty, that something different, that bit of chaos, because they're the opportunities where you never really know what could come out of them. And maybe nothing comes out of it, or maybe something does. Either way, that's not the point of these opportunities. At their heart, these ones are just for you. So what have you always wanted to make time for? The career investments, the life investments, the outlandish hobbies. Try a few things out. Your PhD is an opportunity to understand your field, to become a better researcher, to further that field just a tiny, tiny bit. But as the saying goes, opportunity begets opportunity. So take it on board while you're there. Take on the heavier load. 
take on the responsibility, take on speaking before large audiences and take on the beginner's coding course. Take on what scares you and stretches you. Make sure you say yes to opportunity and then make sure you can say no as well. I can't tell you how much I hate speaking before large audiences or how much I hate coding, but I tried both. I also tried writing book chapters and all of these things worked out very well for me. This video is a variant of a chapter I wrote for uh, Gavin Brown's How to Get Your PhD book, which was published by Oxford University Press just this week. It's an operating manual at the end of the day. He's a professor who has successfully guided countless students through the PhD process and over all those years experience has put his advice together into a handbook on how you can do it too. He's also gathered advice from some of the top researchers in the UK and asked them to contribute. And that includes Professor Mel Leng, who heads the British Geological Survey, and Professor Dam Nancy Rothwell, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Manchester. I can't thank Gavin enough for asking me to be a contributor to It's amazing seeing my name in print and I feel really, really fortunate. I'll put links to where you can get the book from in the box thing below and to anyone who reads it, I really hope you find it helpful. I've already had a flick through at what Gavin's written, what the other contributors have written and um, well, I'm at the end of my PhD now but things might have been smoother <laughs> if this had been around sooner. <laughs> Writing the chapter of this book was an opportunity I said yes to because how could I not? What an amazing thing to have been even slightly involved with. But at the time of writing the chapter, I was doing a weekly script writing course for film and TV, and I had to give that up because I realised that everything in my life from exercising and these videos were all suffering from taking too much on. So something had to go and I had to say no to something as I said yes to something else. Getting the balance right for yes, no, it's not, not easy. Still get it wrong. Say yes to opportunity, say no to opportunity, and you'll figure out what really matters to you. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you want more PhD related content. My name is Lucy Kizik. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford and I'm a chemist in the nuclear industry. And take care.